What's up guys, we're going to do a little something to the Bronco today. Something quick, simple, really shouldn't be too hard. We're going to have to remove that bumper though, because we're installing a little hitch. Now my recommendation is to get the Bronco with the hitch from factory, but I, didn't, I couldn't find it that way, so I'm just going to have to add it afterwards. Okay, so this is the hitch itself, right? There's two kinds of trailer hitch. One that has the bolts going this way, like this one. And one that has the bolts that where you can, it's not welded on like this. You can actually just put the bolt this way or this way, however you want, right? Now, if I were to do this again, I would have gotten the one that has the bolt going this way, right? This way, because when you go in here, you have to take the bumper off. It's not too hard, but still you have to take the bumper off to get to these. If I were to got the other one, you can do it through the back side, right? Okay, so from the back, up here on the very edge you have three bolts that need to come off these three but there's one more that's kind of hidden up here okay four and the same thing on that side there's one and then three so removing these eight bolts i'm gonna try to see if i can just loosen them up and just pull this thing back now do not remove the bumper until you unplug the wiring because the wiring here is like this one is for the sensors and the license plate light that's here. Power tool doesn't fit here very well, it just barely angles in there. The tire's too big. I'm gonna leave the top one in a little bit. Over here, also gonna leave the top one in just a little bit. You know what? Let's remove this tire. Get this out of the way. Okay, you can get the two ones in the middle just by removing the three bolts on each side and leaving the fourth bolt there. But I'm gonna remove the other ones. Just gonna remove the whole thing. Okay, so this one is a little trickier to get to, right? But you can get to it. I'm just So once these loosen up, the good thing is that they get pretty easy towards the end. Okay, so we're going to remove the plug here. Okay, so the pull is here on this side, and then just pull it out. Okay, so you got three 15 millimeters on each corner, there and there, and then right in the middle, like behind where the frame is, there's two more one on each side right now that all of them are off and unplugging the wire on the side this whole thing should come off oh wait there's another plug on this side okay the same exact plug on this side i didn't know it was here same exact thing these go to the sensors so sensor 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 and then one that goes to the license plate light where they put them on both sides? I don't know. Okay, but now you got really good access to just bolt these tight down nice and tight. All right, these are also 15 millimeter. We're gonna tighten these up just a little bit. About to there. Make sure this is nice and tight flush. Okay, so don't just use your impact gun for these. I mean, you use them with impact. But then use a ratchet or even better, a torque wrench. Okay, these need to be torqued down to about 80, just over 80 foot pounds of torque. I mean, super tight. Okay, so now this is bolted on again, 80 foot pounds of torque. And now it's time to put this little bitty hardware on here. So this is for when you have the wiring, the little harness that goes in here clips right in here. Okay, I, haven't, I don't have that yet. Uh, I might go to the store and see if I can buy it today, but. Let's put this on here. This is just gonna be bolted down. And down. All right, let's put the bumper back on. That's cool. That's good. All right, we're just bolting all these back in. All right, that part's done. That was like a 30 minute job. Oh, forgot to plug the parks, the park sensors back in. Click. 
All right, guys, it's been a few days and I found a solution for the wiring. So let me tell you kind of what my thought process is. First of all, I was like, let me get one of these and just open this. <clears throat> it's a nice little thick wire and it has the ability for you to plug in individual wires directly. But then I'm like, well, because this has LEDs, I don't know if it'll work with LEDs straight. It might need a little more juice or something for it. Uh, if it powers a, a trailer with a halogen regular lights. So I bit the bullet and I went ahead and got this Kurt um, plug-in adapter. All right, this is like, I think it was like $75, $80. And, but it plugs into the back, directly into the lights. It comes even with a zip ties. Pretty cool. Some instructions. That's the cover. And then the, this is to plug the power directly, and it has a spot for the fuse, and it comes with a fuse here. Sorry, fuse here. Nice. And it has the, ooh, this is a good thick wire. Dang, I don't know what gauge this is, but this is pretty good. And then the actual adapter. So what these do is they plug into the lights and then plug directly to this. So it just, it creates a T. All right, so the kit comes with some pretty good instructions on here. Um, the first thing I saw is this. I was like, oh no, that's the wrong kind of Bronco. But then it's actually the right Bronco in here. I was like, okay, good, we're good. <laughs> Okay, so I kind of laid it out here where it goes. So that's exactly how it goes, where this goes into that light. The right one goes into the passenger light. Um, the actual wire goes into the front where the battery is a constant. It has a ground right there that goes into the ground. <laughs> Not to that ground, but to the ground of the vehicle. And then this kind of just comes right back out. And hopefully it fits right in there. Okay, so we're gonna start by just opening all this up here. We're gonna remove these screws and these tabs and pop all this out. We should have access to this light right here. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. The good thing is that once you run the wires down, you can't see any of it through here. It's all covered up pretty well, very nicely. Okay, so these are actually screws and they're plastic. So just turn them slowly, they'll slowly come out. Turn them lightly and they'll screw themselves out. 10 millimeters. And that one was very loose. Actually, let's remove, let's remove these also. See that? Go ahead and remove these also. This one came off with it. Oh, I sure did. All right, so we're gonna see if we can pull this out through here. Let's we'll see how it wraps around this. Did I miss? Oh, I missed one. Okay, so now we should just pop out. Try not to force it. Try not to force it, and then I force it out. All right, so now you have access to the plugs. These are the plugs you want to tee into. Here, we're going to do the same thing on the passenger side. Okay, same thing. You have four. You got one, two, three, and four. And then we're going to do the 10 millimeters here. Let's pop this out now. This might be a little easier it doesn't have the stop, the rubber stopper. There it is. All right. All right, we got access to this now too. All right, so these lights are pretty simple. Just push there. You kind of have to hold the back, but then push there and pop it right out. All right, and there you go. You have a plug in for one and then for the other. I mean, these things look identical. Look at that. Good job, Kurt. Look at that. This one. 
Ooh, heard that click? That was a nice click. That's in. And then this one here. Nice click. Okay, you can either set this back here or zip tie it however you want. I'm gonna run this wire straight down to here. It does have a place for you to do the ground. You can do the ground up here or just tear this line off here and do the ground further down however you want. I think I'm gonna run it further down. So I don't I don't wanna screw into this. I'd rather screw into the frame or something down there. So, so all you gotta do is kind of just tear this off here. You can push, you can run this all the way back here. Look at that, straight down. Yeah, we're gonna do the ground down there somewhere. All right, so I am going to run it. Okay, so I ran it through the very edge here. I actually had to unplug the either your sensors or a uh, license plate light just to run it around here instead of around this way All right, so just in case you need to unplug or plug this back in to remove the bumper it won't be in the way so ran it right through here to the very edge and then back here now you don't want to leave this here because there's a hot muffler next to it so we're going to run it through the front not on the on the side of the muffler and then down to the to the back of the, the with where the actual hitch is, okay? And then the actual passenger side, we're also gonna run it through the front side here, all the way down to that side, and then back up. So let's do that first. Okay, so this side is done. It's running back here, right through the very edge, through the bumper itself. Um, well, the front of the bumper, right? Between the bumper and the crash bar behind it. Then it goes all the way back around this way and up right here to here, right? And it's better to have the excess here where you can kind of wrap it around something instead of it dangling down there where you can get into trouble somehow. Okay, guys, I went ahead and took these bolts out so we can actually see this a little better, right? And you can actually line up and control I mean shoot I might even be able to run the wire through here okay guys I'm trying something different here so I'm connected this over here and go straight down and through here and I was able to fit it and just feed it Ouch. mostly with pinkies <laughs> depends how big your fingers are all the way through so you're going through there It's already right there. So we can kind of push it out through there. So that was not hard at all. You use one finger on this side, the other one on this side, and you kind of just feed it out. Push it out slowly. Come out. See? Now you have a nice, safe, secure line in there. Go up here. And then plug that. See how this works. Okay, so I got the ground right there. I ended up drilling a little bitty hole, just like this, there, and then running the screw through it, because that's first, I feel like it's more solid ground than this. And then again, this is the body of the vehicle. This is the frame. I'd rather do here than here and rust. I, I don't know, my thoughts. Okay, now I did the same thing here, and we're putting this here, right there. Okay, out of the way on, the back side, not on the heated side. Um, the only thing is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put the double-sided tape on it and the screw just for extra. Okay, we're taking a little break here. I'm gonna have a little beer. I found this beer at the store today. It's called Superbach. Never heard of Superbach before, but apparently it's made in Portugal. I love Bach beers. I've been really into Bach beers lately. That one, and there's also the Shiner box and the Crawford box, but yeah, Superbach. It's not bad. It actually tastes a little light. It doesn't taste as thick as a regular Bach beer does, or as dark, or as hoppy, but still, it's not bad. 
Okay, passenger side, nice and neat, all the way through the back of this, sorry, through the back of this, and then in here, through here, and into there. I'm sorry, out of here, and then into there, right? And then you got this, and I just put the excess in here, just stuffed it in there. So it just has this in here. I'm gonna have to buy something to make this look nicer here. Then the wires go through back here, again, away from the heat, up. I put a little zip tie here, kind of make sure this excess is not in the way anywhere, right? Okay, now, ground is here, right? And now, positive, I actually crimped, crimped it back here. I crimped it and then stuffed it back here. I'm not gonna show you, it's already stuck in there. And then I ran the wire through here, through there, out through here, and then back in, and then through the frame, through the back. Over to this side, kind of following where the brake line is, and then it crosses over because the brake line crosses over also over here. So I made it cross over, and then all the way up, and I kind of wrap it around here. I could put a zip tie on here, but it probably doesn't need it. And then up that side, and then right up through here, straight behind all this, and it's going to plug into here, okay? But with the fuse. So there's a bunch of little excess. So this I am going to cut off. I'm probably going to cut it like around right here. Okay, so I just crimp the black wire that's going all the way through the bottom to the fuse here. The fuse isn't in here yet. And then I also crimped this that came with it. And I made it just long enough so it should fit like right here. Just like that. Okay, so I have a little tray of a whole bunch of old ones, old uh, bolts and nuts. And look, this one fits perfect. And it's also a 10 millimeter. So with the washer, oh, let's put this thing on here. Don't want to drop this. Just like that. And then the washer, and then this. You should be doing this without this plugged in. Unplug that first. But I like to live on the edge. Pull this down a little bit. Look at that. Perfect. Close you back up. Now this doesn't this still doesn't have a fuse in here. I need to throw the fuse in here, but I want to make sure everything's plugged in correctly first. And then we'll come back and do that. Alright, so I'm gonna put a little bit of electrical tape now just to let you know this is fancy tape. This is not regular tape you get anywhere. This is like stuff you get from Hoonigan. Look at that. Racing tape. <laughs> Alright guys, tip on putting this back in. You want to put this side in first and then lean it that way. So like this is the wrong side, but like that and then that, right? So here we're gonna do the same. And it does have these little clips in the back, so you want to make sure those don't break. Because those go straight in there. Okay? So, again, you want to go in... I'm oh, sorry. This side first. Like that. And, <laughs> I don't even think about this, but you can pick this thing up also to give you a little more space here. Just a little more space. It's not too necess necessary, but it's good. All right, guys, that is it. All right, that's probably going to be the final look right there, unless I go with the actual 7-pin. Which there is a way to convert this, the 4-pin to a 7-pin, 7-pin with 4-pin. I might do that in the future if I need to, but for now, this works. So now I can legally pull a trailer. All right, guys, job complete, ready to go. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and check out some of these other videos that I have. Deuce!